Buenas tardes a todos, buenos días también, bienvenidos a un nuevo evento, una nueva capacitación. Welcome to a new training of the, the uh, webinars uh, cycles of LACNIC. Today we are presenting an information uh, topic. Uh, it has to do with the opportunities that uh, LACNIC offers for the development of critical infrastructure in the region. And to that end, we have Guillermo Sicileo. Guillermo is the leader, an R&D leader for critical infrastructure at LACNIC. So without further ado, I give the floor to Guillermo. But let me remind you that this session is being recorded. You'll be able to, uh, it will be available in our website very soon. You'll have access to the video. And in addition, it's being translated into three languages. So you'll be able to listen to it in Spanish, Portuguese, and English, just by picking the language you want in uh, the toolbar. So without further ado, I wish you a very, very good experience in this new webinar. So we'll be with you 60 minutes with Guillermo et al. So Guillermo, if you're ready, you have the floor. Thank you, Mariela. Yes, I'm ready indeed. All right. So today in this webinar, we're going to discuss the opportunities for developing a critical infrastructure in the region. As Mariela said, I will um, uh, take the floor with, uh, together with my uh, collaborators, Elisa Verano, who works with me in R&D, Alejandro Costa, who works with me in uh, development, and Carlos Martinez, who's uh, LACNIC's technical manager. So they will address uh, some parts of the presentation. But before that, I'll start with uh, the presentation and explaining why we are doing this. So let me share the presentation. So, what we want to present here is uh, a number of programs or initiatives that we have developed that have to do with the implementation of various resources and infrastructures in the region. But before we start discussing each of those topics, let me tell you why we do this, why we want to deploy infrastructure and why we've been doing this for several years. On the one hand, what we want is to reduce the uh, criticality of some resources that are essential for the internet. For instance, the DNSs that serve the uh, tool zone or scenic uh, copies of some parts that are important for the uh, operation of uh, the internet. Carlos will explain this in uh, greater detail, but essentially, the idea is that we should have a more distributed uh, access to the DNS uh, key aspects, um, key areas. This has to do with a resource that if it weren't distributed like this, it would be highly critical. But thanks to these uh, possibilities of replicating uh, the DNS uh, zones in different uh, servers and being able to take that to the users' networks turns those critical resources, uh, making them less critical and approaching them to the end users. So that is the first idea of why we deploy this. So to reduce the criticality of some things that if they were centralized, it would be very easy uh, for them to be attacked or to fail. On the other hand, what we want is to improve uh, the safety, the security and stability of the network. So some things have to do with the deployment of RPKI, 
and uh, the uh, organizations uh, to deploy validators and uh, ROAS uh, that has to do so. And the same thing with DNSSEC uh, as improving the security of the DNS. And it also has to do with the stability of the network, because by now we have seen many of the problems that we have to continuing to deploy IPv4 when there are no longer any addresses. So increasingly, we see complexity in the IPv4 network. So IPv6 turns out to be a necessity. And for the network to continue to grow, we need resources. So that is one of the ideas. Likewise, one of the issues that we want to do is to increase our knowledge and the behavior of the internet in the region. Here we have a part that has a lot to do with measurements and the analysis of what's happening in the region. And both uh, us and other researchers need to know how the traffic behaves, the paths of the packets, uh, for, uh, the uh, type of interconnections, both in uh, the countries and internationally, because we know a lot about the physical infrastructure, the cables. Everybody has seen those maps with the new cables that are being deployed in the region and all that. But that's the physical thing. Those are the physical cables. But we, what we don't ha understand so clearly is where the interconnections take place at an IP level, where the traffic goes, because sometimes the cables go one way, but the routing goes uh, a different way. So being able to better understand this, that's what we want to know. So to that end, we need to have information of the BGP routes. That is why we have BGP collectors. We also want active measurements. We conduct research and we have a project for deploying measurement platforms. That's what Elisa is going to tell you about in further detail. And finally, we also consider that uh, part uh, some of these initiatives need to have local capacity. That is being able to create uh, uh, technical experts locally in the country. So we believe that both the operators and uh, the people connected to the network should adopt the new standards and the best practices. And that is why the technical uh, training and the workshops are part of our activity. And this is something that we will also discuss at this webinar. And Alejandro is going to tell you that. Many of you know Alejandro because he's one of the people that works harder on this. So, as I was telling you, the infrastructure that we promote in this webinar, we are going to talk uh, of uh, deploying uh, DNS uh, servers or other areas uh, that LACNIC has with any CAS service. We are going to discuss measurement platforms, deploying uh, measurement platforms. This is what we aspire, what we aim at. We want you to help us do these things. So, for instance, deploying measurement probes in a, a significant number of ASNs in the countries or to organize the deployathons uh, uh, for a community. And also to deploy the BGP collectors in uh, IXPs or the ra other routes of interest, deploying um, technologies that are critical for LACNIC as so IPv6 validation of RPKI, creation of rules uh, by the operators, adoption of DNS, DNSSEC, etc. So what we want is for operators to adopt the standards that uh, provide uh, security and stability. What I mentioned about strengthening the local technical capacities um, when you organize workshops, tutorials, meetings, and other activities, we are uh, um, eager to participate so that that gives us a chance to disseminate the uh, LACNIC strategic messages. And the last thing 
is the issue of being able to promote research activities. We conduct a lot. So we, we want to disseminate the research or research on issues of interconnection, security, IPv6, DNS. And we want you to, we want people to know those things and to encourage you to complement the research and to uh, improve them further. We have cases where that has happened. Some research uh, triggered research by other groups that uh, further discussed, uh, that further uh, went on with a more in-depth research. I'm going to give the floor to Carlos Martinez. He's LACNIC's technical manager. He will talk about um, the ANYCAST uh, uh, copies of DNS. Thank you, Guillermo. That was a very good introduction. So let's talk a bit about uh, the technologies and uh, um, what, what is essential for the infrastructure of the internet in the region. I'm usually asked to talk about DNS. So I'm going to tell you my vision about the aspects where LACNIC and its community may contribute to support the stability and the resilience of the DNS system. I won't talk about DNS a lot because I assume that all of you understand clearly what DNS is and why it's important for the operations of the internet today. But I want to talk about Anycast. You know that DNS is a protocol or a system that operates in a very stable manner. It's relatively simple to install when you want to operate DNS servers at a large scale, if you have a very large zone with a lot of traffic, many queries, or you have a recursive server, or you uh, provide service to many clients, there the issue of the availability of the server may require some special work. Now, the DNS, as it's a protocol, um, uh, it's you can use the Anycast technique. The Anycast is something that when you, uh, sometimes you think that without it, uh, DNS wouldn't be able to work because it's a technique to uh, address uh, um, the servers. And in an Anycast, we assign the same IP address to many boxes. What do we get that? If we announce uh, those, uh, uh, unique addresses by BGP when uh, when a client wants to query that server, it will end up in the closest server in terms of BGP with fewer hops of the autonomous system, regardless of whether there are more. At, um, as it is, uh, 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 and this works and it works very well. Now, if a server, a DNS server, that's publishing its public address through any cast disappears. It turns off or whatever. Nothing happens. To the extent that the BGP announcement continues to be there, the BGP itself will choose the next uh, better one. And most of the times, users don't even realize. I'm sure that many of you never realized when instead of going to the local copy of a, a root server, you go and ask uh, somebody else a little bit further. So I described a, a scenario that has to do with continuity of server, to be able, being able to turn off a server because it, it broke or it has some problem or I, I have to update it. I just turn it off and nothing happens to the extent that there are other Anycast announcements that are present in the BGP table. And this helps me improve latency. The closer I have an Anycast copy, um, uh, my uh, my queries are going to take a shorter time. So the more Anycast copies, and here I introduce a concept, we have a server that has the same IP, and the more the copies we have, then the 
tener mejor disponibilidad. Si tengo una falla en un servidor, puedo reemplazarlo sin estar presionado things. porque se me vencen los cachetes. Tengo mejor disponibilidad si hay una falla en un servidor y porque for any reason, then one of the main roles, one of the key roles, and this is one of the main motivations of the Anycast services, is that mitigation or resistance to distributed denial of service, surface attacks. And this is one of the things that they suffer most from. When they receive traffic storms of distributed origins from thousands or tens of thousands of different origins, it then becomes very difficult to filter traffic the genuine traffic from which that which is not genuine. So if we have copies, then this attack then naturally becomes diluted in all the copies because it is distributed. And if this is a denial of service, which is not so distributed where the IP address is, is set is then absorbed, so the safeguards all the rest of things. So it becomes quite difficult for an attacker to saturate the network capacities. So the more copies, the better. There's no best single recipe and algorithm that states that for a given zone, I need a next number of copies, but the more, the better. Now, what is LACNIC's role in the any cast in DNS. I classified this into three different groups. You are aware, and there's a slide that clarifies this better. LACNIC operates the reversed zones. If you do a DNS query for an IP address, not a name, then LACNIC operates the reverse zones for the slash 8 in IPv4 and the slash 12 in IPv6 that have been assigned. So these zones, we have the registers that are aimed at the service where each of the LACNIC members configures the reverse zones, has a, have a lot of traffic. And that is why when distributing these with any class, cast, we have one of the major techniques to ensure the availability of this service. Think that if the resolution of this zone would fail, all the members of LACNIC would have a problem. So this becomes very important because reverse resolution is very important, for example, for authentication of certain services and particularly for sending emails. Many servers verify this in order to classify spam, for example. This has to do with LACNIC's reverse zones. Now, the reverse zones of all RIRs depend on two zones, which is in ADDR ARPA and IPv6.ARPA. In ADDR.ARPA is not exclusive to LACNIC. This is done by all the RIRs to do a reverse solution. Now, if the become, these become important for the zone, for the region, then these two zones become very important for the region. Now, the scheme is very important for all the RIRs, and LACNIC has a responsibility for one-fifth of this. So this is a cooperative effort done by all RIRs, but we have a role to play on our part. We have to make our share. And then finally, we have the root servers of the internet. You are aware that the root element, the root zone, is very important so that the entire DNS works, not just the diverse one, so that all the zones work. And we are aware that there are 13 authoritative root servers that we know based on the letters from A through to M. Now, these servers, almost none of these service of these root servers is a unique server. They are all multiplied by any cast. And at LACNIC, for many years now, I think for about the past 20 years, we have been trying to support the deployment of Anycast in the root zone of the TNS. We have a program called Mas Raices, More Roots. And we work with some of the letters, but not with all the letters. We work with those with which we have cooperation agreements. I'll show this in a while. 
Now, to clarify this better, think that the reverse resolution works as follows. You will recall that reverse solution when you ask the DNS for an IP address behind what is happening is a transformation of the query into a normal DNS query through a PTR type register, which is in the ARPA region, ADD ARPA or IPv6 ARPA. And this inverts the order of the bytes. We learned this at university. The IPv6 reversals are written in a way, but conceptually it's the same as the other one. And this is what I was saying. We have this program called Mas Raíces, More, more Roots. Desde hace mucho, mucho tiempo, eh, ahí como, como se ve en el gráfico este, tenemos... For a long time, we have been working here. En proceso de trabajo. As you can see, we have 36 installed copies and some are in progress. This is information from 2022. These are already installed and this can illustrate something that I will explain. Namely, when you install a copy of a root server, this implies operations at several levels. It implies with the operator of the server. In the I, it's in Sweden, and some are in the United States. One, some are in ICANN, some are in RIPE. So this involves cooperation with the operator. It also involves acquiring or provisioning hardware. And the process from the moment the decision is made to install this in the root server, this takes quite a long time. And these are some of the things that we wish to, we wish to recruit the support of the community. Regarding the letters, we have worked with F, with L, with K, with I. And as from this year, we will be also working with letter B. And this is a new one that will be incorporated to the region. And I think this is my last slide, Guillermo. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you for your presentation on DNS and the program we have for deploying DNS infrastructure. The other topic that we'll be discussing today are the measurement platforms. As I was saying, we have activities that we're, to which we would like you to contribute. I will now give the floor to Elisa Peirano to make this part of the presentation. Thank you, Guillermo. Hello, everyone. Let me tell you about the measurement platforms for conducting internet measurements. As Guillermo was saying, we are very much interested in conducting connectivity studies at country and at regional level in order to better understand how we are connected. With this aim, we need to have data sources that have a good coverage in the LACNIC region and also that they are objective in terms of the scope. For some years now, we have been working on the deployment of open platforms such as RIPE Atlas, which you might be familiar with. RIPE Atlas is a RIPE NCC tool that is based on measurement pros hosted by the internet community throughout the world. This is a very powerful platform and you can conduct measurements of many types using all the active probes at the moment of conducting the measurement. But in order to make the most, it is important to have a good coverage, as I was saying. For the time being, the coverage in our region is not enough in order to have representative data in the countries. Maybe some of you have heard about the latest connectivity study called Traffic Paths in LAC Countries. If not, I recommend you to read this study. Here we analyze this coverage in the mobile platforms through Speed Checker. This is a very interesting study and we had very good results. Some we had expected and others not so much. But what I wanted to tell you about this data source is that it has a bias towards mobile networks. 
So what do we need from you? What do we need from the community? Of course, we would like to inform you about this topic and to reach out to people, to organizations, to groups, to communities in all the different countries and encourage you to set up a probe because this is based on the participation of the entire community. We need to have people that cooperate with us who allow us, uh, who can make us convene group of network operators or ASNs, ASN groups in order to install these probes in the different regions. We also need to count on your support to organize informative webinars and particularly deploy thons which are those instances where we meet to set up these probes. And this will allow us to have the adequate courage to make the best of this tool and to conduct all these studies that are of interest, not only to LECNIC, but to all of you. So I invite you to support us with this project. Thank you, Eli. Yes, this is something we have been working on. And if we can count on local support, this can be then extended to more countries. I will now tell you about something else that has to do with knowing more about routing in the region, the status of routing in the region. This has to do with BGP route collectors. As you might be aware, we have global route collectors like Ripe, raised, and others which are strongly based in Europe and in the United States. And then there are some in our region, but not so many. So these collectors see the global routing tables. And this allows you to obtain a lot of information. But then there are other parts of the internet that we don't see is these are the IXP tables where the operators meet. These are the traffic exchange points. At LACNIC in recent years, we have this initiative of deploying BGP connectors in those points where the operators interconnect. Mainly in the IXPs, we collaborate with two other organizations like IX and the Internet Society. And what we try to do is to have an architecture that is similar to that used in the other projects that we mentioned initially. What we would like to have is an architecture that is simple and easy to replicate. Now, what are the objectives of this project? One is to provide tools to the operators and the researchers in the region. As I said before, this information of the BGP routes can help us and other researchers in order to conduct studies and see what is happening with the announcements. We can see different types of information. The study that Eli mentioned before, for example, is a bit different. This was done with an active measurement platform, but we have other similar ones that conduct studies on the routes of the region, in this region. So we have information published in the web page containing all this information. For example, those autonomous systems which have more traffic, those that appear in the routing tables, the IXPs, and so on. And at the same time, this research can serve as input as a tool for the researchers. We're trying to develop some tools for the operators based on this uh, information. On the other hand, it uh, makes it possible to detect uh, routing problems. You can uh, consult those tables and see where the announcements, where the uh, flawed uh, announcements uh, are located and see the invalid data. And we, it also gives us information of the BGP tables in the region, uh, real-time BGP updates, uh, 
uh, prefix visibility, we can see where a prefix is visible in what uh, tables, etc. And all of this contributes to a better understanding of the routing system and the uh, region's internet topography. What do we need uh, specifically if you want to collaborate? On the one hand, we need a virtual server where we can install the collector. That server is simple, four uh, gigas of RAM um, and uh, 100 gigas in the disk. And it is important for the server to be connected to the route server or route reflector and with public access to the internet so that we can take the uh, information. So the collector listens, learns, uh, the routes that uh, the route servers, or in the case of the uh, IXPs, the route reflectors, it will announce all the routes. So the collector just takes those routes and saves the information without announcing anything. We're not announcing anything yet. And so we collect that and we save that every day. With that information, we can uh, conduct research and we want to provide new tools to operators. So basically, this is what I wanted to show of uh, the BGP collector routes and how we can receive assistance uh, from organizations in each country. Now, in terms of uh, the deployment of technologies and standards, I mentioned this earlier. This has to do with the technologies for the stability and security of the internet. So we are worried that uh, the network, both the global internet, uh, but basically the regional internet must be stable and uh, secure. When we speak of stability, we want the network to remain operating in time with no disruptions. That a network that thrives, that continues to grow at a normal pace, not to remain stagnant, and so that it may be useful so new users and new organizations may connect to the network. And on the other hand, security, because when we want to do internet transactions, we want them to be secure. When we want to connect to uh, uh, we want to talk or we want to connect uh, somewhere or send messages. We want that to be secure and to reach the uh, the uh, the correct uh, um, addressee. So one of the techniques that we technologies that we promote is the RPKI validation. The validation of RPKI. You don't, and not all the operators have to do it, but it is important for the operators that receive router, uh, routing tables from different places to do it, that may be connected, interconnected with more than one site, and that receive the routing table so that they can determine which are the routes that are valid and which invalid. So what is necessary if for all the organizations to create the OAs to protect their announcements so they won't be hijacked and uh, to prevent any abuses. We continue to use the Internet Routing Registry, although there has been an important change uh, these years. There are some that check the announcements against the IRRs. Um, so we want the BGP registries to be um, consistent, both in LACNIC and the others. So it's important to ask the uh, organizations to improve that. Very often, the R IRR registries have remained, um, are not updated, or they may be wrong. So here in this uh, chart, you see the valid uh, prefixes in RPKI and uh, those that are valid uh, in IRR, 
valid or invalid uh, an IRR. And is there, you see that there's a significant percentage of prefixes that are announced in uh, internet that are not consistent to what is registered uh, in an IRR. So, as I said earlier, another issue that we want to promote is the deployment of IPv6 to the end user. In there, in many places, there are already there's already IPv6 in the trunk uh, routes, but not in the uh, final and the users, and that uh, jeopardizes the stability. So, as I said earlier, increasingly, the operations with IPv4 gets increasingly complex. So it is important to gradually adopt IPv6, reaching the end users, and finally, the adoption of DNSSEC. We talk a lot about DNS, but DNSSEC is what provides a uh, DNS with security. Then there are two parts, as the same, the same as with RPKI. There is a part that is incorporating the DNSSEC registries in the zones, but there's another part that has to do with the validation of the DNS and the so that the resolvers may validate the DNSSEC. So there we promote that, and we can help. As to strengthening local technical capacities, now we also have quite a significant uh, job here. And here I'm going to give the floor to Alejandro Acosta, whom you already know. Hello, Chicho. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to hear of so many wonderful topics. Uh, of security of IPv6 uh, and the internet and ROAs and DNS. Uh, very few things uh, may sound more exciting than what I'm going to discuss now, because uh, you said that uh, I should talk about strengthening the local technical capacities, and you know that I'm uh, a fan of this. Whenever we speak of education, I get excited somehow. So we wanted to mention that at LACNIC, for many, many years, more than a decade ago, we started to, uh, strengthening the technical capacities in the various countries and cities that we visit. And, and we do that through talks. So right now we can do them in person or they can also be online, remote, um, depending on the case. We also uh organize many um in-person and uh, online courses uh, on ipv6 uh, rpki dns dns6 uh, ixp and maybe sometimes we can develop variations of those and here i'd like to pause because when we mention when you mention uh, the courses remote we won't give them to uh, organize them for a specific organization or IXP, but we aim at reaching the community as a whole. If we're going to give a resource in an X country, in an N uh, city, we want the different IXPs in the country to participate, the different organizations, university, government, so that we can reach as many uh, participants as possible, many stakeholders as possible. Very often we uh, develop uh, articles and blog posts, uh, articles covering the uh, topics that we discovered, uh, discussed today, and the blog posts. Uh, as a matter of fact, in this webinar, we uh, there are several of uh, the uh, people that uh, write uh, those articles. And it's very interesting to receive your feedback because it helps us see what are the topics that are um, uh, of great concern. Maybe an article may not be complete and you might help us complementing that information for the future. And of course, we develop videos, tutorials, 
and we do a lot of things. How to install the Ford validator? How do we do this or that in VGP or I or IPv6? Recently, we organized one how to visibilize a container lab in the Max with the Apple Silicon chips and so on and so forth. So, and all items related to uh, the internet. And uh, finally, in many opportunities, met all of us at LACNIC, we work with different uh, entities, either the government, the private sector, education, NGOs. Our idea is to assist you. You may tell us, for instance, well, we want to promote IPv6 and the, with the, and the provider, the government, maybe we could have a joint call. So we invite the various stakeholders or maybe with an IXPs we haven't yet convinced anybody for the deployment or you may have specific questions we we won't touch your equipment your machines but we can guide you uh, to the extent possible and the same thing may may apply to education and ngos so that's what i wanted to tell you about uh, capacity strengthening Tito. thank you ali Yes, precisely. You mentioned some things that are interesting beyond what I mentioned of the workshops and training. Well, you may count on LACNIC, for instance, the universities to talk to operators if there's anything you need to solve specific issues, well, you can count on us for that. And we are at your disposal. Likewise, if you want to hold uh, meetings with governments at the universities, have often asked us to, to give some talks, or they invite us uh, to cooperate in their postgraduate courses to present topics uh, related to this. So let me finish with the research activities that we held. Here we have a site to pub where we publish our studies. Um, here you have a imasd.lacnic.net, uh, and there we discuss uh, issues related to security, regional interconnection, deployment of IPv6, DNS, and BGP. And on the one hand, we want you to learn about uh, these uh, studies that are available in the website. You have a lot of statistics and measurements that are also available on uh, our page. publicados. Eh, estos son estudios más largos, no son lo, los, los artículos de blog. Well, these, uh, these are longer articles, not the blog posts uh, that uh, uh, you mentioned, uh, and uh, that have to do more with collecting information and uh, data analysis. Pueden ver ahí este tres estudios que son los últimos que aparecen en esa página que son el análisis de los caminos de tráfico que, que hicimos so there you see some of studies one is analysis of the traffic paths where the traffic of the region goes to within each country the other one is on the use of dns over tls in the region and then the anti-spoofing study conducted by the CSERT group, LACNIC. So what we wish to do with this is that you are not only, not only become familiar with this, but also consult these and expand your information on this. And even you can conduct your own research following the same methodology or a different methodology to visualize the data that you have there. Very often the data is available so that you can do your own visualizations, analyses, and so on. So here you could also help us by disseminating these studies so, among the research groups that you know in your countries or in the operators group. We work a lot with the NOGS, with the network operators groups. 
And it is important that these reports are then circulated because they contain a lot of information for operators in order to eh, bueno. eh, para, para terminar eh, todas estas iniciativas que estuvimos haciendo, ahora las queremos all these initiatives that we mentioned we now wish to structure through a program which is R D ambassadors program through this program which was published yesterday we made, published the call yesterday this seeks to have a formal program with the benchmarks of the community. The objective is on one hand to strengthen the ties of collaboration and to strengthen the technological capacities of the community. So all the concepts that we have mentioned today we would like to provide a framework for them with the benchmarks with the people from the community and we also wish to have new ambassadors new people in the different countries who then can continue developing LACNIC's link with the communities in different countries this program will work for a one-year period the call was sent out yesterday. The call will be open until the month of April. And what we expect is that those who are interested to submit working proposals, at the bottom you have the link containing more information and how you can submit your proposals. So those who are interested should then structure a plan containing all these topics that we have mentioned for example you can say you wish to organize a deployathon or a workshop with operators where we would like LACNIC to give some talks i'm going to set up any cast servers and an ixp and we might have a collector there. So those are the types of things that we'd like you to propose as a working plan. You can each propose things based on the capacities available in your respective situations. And based on that, we'll select three ambassadors this year, who will be then be working from June until the middle of next year. LECNIC, as a counterpart, will give you a whole set of benefits. This includes the possibility of going to LACNIC 43, LACNIC next year, the meeting next year, to present the results of your study to help you develop a personal brand. For example, highlighting the features in the sense that these are different and why these are better positioned than others. And you can even have a budget for some of the tasks. This might include software or organizing an event. This ambassador's program will be then in force for the remaining of this year. The call was sent out yesterday, as I already mentioned. You can participate, it's open to everyone. You can participate individually. And what we expect then is precisely that, to become benchmarks for your local communities and then assist us in carrying out the activities we mentioned earlier. Because at LACNIC, we can provide support, but it is difficult for all of us to organize a workshop, for example, in just any country. It's not so simple unless we have low people locally who are familiar with the universities and the different organizations. So that is why we are organizing this program where we would like to ask you to become the 
R&D ambassadors for LACNIC. So having said that, we finished. Thank you very much for your patience. And let's see if there are questions or comments in the Q&A box. Thank you very much. I'm going to start reading out the questions we have, and we will answer as we go along. The first question is from Simon Perez Cordova. He said, good afternoon. I'd like to ask whether among the internet routing studies for Latin American countries, you have included cloud provider tests as it is more and more common to use SD1 and cloud technologies. And so far, there are no not there are not all regions have cloud regions, not all countries in lack. And it's quite common that the regions that they use cloud regions in North America. Well, yes. That there are many autonomous systems that have CDN and cloud uh, services. So, laterally, this is mentioned, but there is no specific study on this. The next question is from Jose Ramirez. Mr. Carlos from iTech Solutions, we put everything at your disposal so that LACNIC can assist us with advancing with the deployment of replicas of DNS raíces, and we'd also be grateful if we could host replicas of LAC TLD. Carlos, over to you. Thank you. I already answered him. Uh, Jose, thank you for your good disposition. I will try to see how we can work together with you on all these things. Thank you. Luis, Yumikinga says, in our organization, we're interested in participating in the measurement systems and the internet probes. We would be grateful for your information to, in order to be able to start. Elisa. Thank you, Luis, for your offered assistance. I invite you to apply to the ambassadors program. And let me tell you that we have a specific site in LACNIC's webpage that deals with all these topics. I will include the links in the chat so that you can check this out. And I'm also going to give you an email so that you can write to us so that we can send you more specific information. Thank you. Maria Luisa Pinuesa Beltran, she says, how could we project this topic? In other words, do we make these presentations based on a list of topics or the ideas to promote the content and talks by LACNIC? Alejandro, yes. And this has to do with the following question to where Maria Luisa expands on her question. Should we organize the meetings and talks so that someone from LACNIC comes, or should we do this? Well, Maria Luisa, let me explain. Without doubt, if you work with an organization and you would like one of us to give a talk internally on one of the topics that we have been discussing, DNS and measurements, etc. We can do so. We would just have to coordinate things. We can then coordinate date and time that is convenient to both of us. And I like something that you mentioned, you, namely that you would also be making talks at LACNIC. Well, we are very much interested in that. It's very valuable. This is about training the trainers. We train a lot of people and hopefully people that come to our courses and to our activities can then replicate this and give more talks on the same topic. So this would be utopic, but well, we look forward to 
those kinds of things. Thank you, Alejandro. John Paredes says, good afternoon. I would like to ask what type of analysis do you expect to do on the collector's RAS? What would you recommend in terms of security on the prefixes received based on cybersecurity attacks? Well, what we have received in the collectors is then analyzed and we have published what we see in the region's IXPs. We have, for example, interesting data, namely the use of prepending by operators. The ASN prepending is when you announce a route to locate it to extend the path artificially. So then this is not preferred in the PTP algorithm. So this is a technology used by operators in order to have an inference as to how the paths are then influenced and how the load is balanced, the incoming load is balanced. Now, the surprising thing is that in many cases, we see that operators do prepending towards the IXP when in fact, this should not be the case because it should be preferred to use the, the, the ISP path should be preferred against the other one. So this is one of the types of analyses that result from studies such as these. Others are the areas of influence of the IXPs. Normally, IXPs begin as local traffic exchange points. However, we see that many of the traffic exchange points have operators from other countries that publish their routes there. And then, for example, the IXP is in Argentina. There was a, a connection, sorry. So these are general types of analysis. Then more specific things can be done to, for example, to see what are the prefixes are there, what is published, and what are the autonomous systems. And in terms of security on the received prefixes, what we recommend is to adopt RPKI, and if you receive routing tables, then to have a validator for the purpose of validation, and then we have the fraud validator or routinator so we would be supporting these things. And one of the things we'd like is that more operators in the region do RPKI validation. So there are no more questions, and we are now almost at the end of the session as planned. So I think this would be all. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Alejandro. And thank you very much to all of you for joining us this afternoon. You will remember, let me remind you that the presentation will be available online. And there you can look up all this information and the ambassador's program which was already published and will be available on LACNIC's website. So we invite you to visit the site and see if you can apply to this program. And as I was saying, we look forward to counting on you and to have new benchmarks and ambassadors in the different countries. Thank you very much to all of you and goodbye, thank you.